My name is Andrew Sansom. Most people call me Andy. I'm a native Texan and I've been involved in conservation in our state for most of my life. The Texas Hill Country is probably one of the most, if not the most, iconic regions in the state. All of us remember coming here as children, swimming in the springs, the wildlife and the beautiful scenery of the Hill Country. But today, it's also one of the fastest growing regions of the United States and is under any number of severe threats because of that growth. One of the most serious is the threats of projects like the Permian Highway Pipeline, which would completely bisect the Hill Country. It would threaten the Edwards Aquifer, which provides all of the water for San Antonio, much of the water for New Braunfels and San Marcos. In Texas, 95% of the landscape is owned by private citizens, and that means all of our wildlife habitat, all of our watersheds, and all of our recharge areas for our aquifers occur on private property. I've just been trained for the past couple of years to be able to rally the people together, regardless of our differences, to protect one thing we know we all need, which is water. The river and the water has always been a prominent theme in my life, and in the past couple of years, with the influx and growth of San Marcos, we've seen a lot of people come there who don't really get the importance of why we have to protect our water. When it came here, it's like my worst nightmare coming true to hear that they want to come through my home, through our water. The project that Kinder Morgan is proposing with the Permian Highway Pipeline is uh, one of the greatest threats that we've ever had to face in this area. And it's namely due to the environmental sensitivity that we have and our unique ecosystem and everything that's intrinsically related and connected to that. You know, the hill country in the Edwards Aquifer is really unique, and it's one of the big concerns I've got about any pipeline going through the hill country because of the geology. It's like Swiss cheese and with little holes, or in big holes, caves, all through it, and you can get a molecule from the surface down to the groundwater in just a few hours, and then once it's in the groundwater, that groundwater travels really, really fast. You can travel from, say, the Blanco River to Barton Springs in just a few days. A major spill of oil and gas over the Edwards is one of the nightmare scenarios for somebody that's an environmental protection advocate like I am. It's just really the wild, wild west in Texas in terms of putting new pipelines in the ground. There just is no process, and a pipeline company can do whatever they want. There's no requirement that they talk to the public. There's no requirement that they talk to landowners until the day that they come and tell them, I'm, I'm taking your land through eminent domain. There's no requirement to talk to local governments, uh, city and county officials. There's no requirement to talk to local emergency response officials. They file a one-page form with the Texas Railroad Commission, and the day after that, they can go start taking land using the power of eminent domain. Nobody reviews and approves that application that they make. All they do is file it with the Railroad Commission. We have pipeline accidents almost every day in this country on a weekly basis in the state of Texas. And so even though when you look at it on a per mile basis, the probability is low. When one of those accidents happen, the consequences can be really, really high. And that's the thing, we've got to talk about both elements of risk. Once you've contaminated an aquifer, it's never the same again. It might be decades, if ever, that it would be drinkable again. We're building a pipeline in the state of Texas. We're following the rules in the state of Texas. And I get it, people don't like the rules. Let me tell you something, if you want to change, go to the legislature and get a change. When we're designing projects, we're designing for the long term. So when we build this, it can't be, we need this for the next couple of years. No, we need this for a very, very long time. You have to assume at some point there's gonna be an accident on a pipeline and you have to assume that it may happen in your community and be prepared for it. You have many protections in place. Doesn't mean it's absolutely infallible that you can guarantee and someone says guarantee me that nothing is ever going to happen ever on this pipeline system. I can't guarantee you that I'm going to walk out of this room. Can you? What can you guarantee a hundred percent of anything?
One of the things I used to do was spill response and environmental remediation. And to think about if you have a spill of hydrocarbons out over the Edwards Arc for recharge zone and you're trying to catch it, it's going to be almost impossible. If it gets out of the pipe, more than likely you've lost it and you've lost it into the aquifer and you're not going to be able to recover most of it. And that's what makes the Hill Country so sensitive to oil and gas pipelines. We're on the Halifax Ranch, which is named for Halifax Creek. My father bought it in 1933. It's been a good many years in the family. I'm mostly concerned about the wildlife habitat, and you've got to have water for wildlife. There are lots of karst features like sinkholes on the property, some that contribute water to San Marcos Springs and during drought times to Barton Springs. So it goes in different directions from here. I'm not used to having pipelines in the hill country. It concerns me what might happen in the future, uh, and I'm immediately concerned about the construction, the destruction that is gonna be caused. There's so many sinkholes where it's gonna be cutting through, and I, I, you know, they'll probably just ignore them and plow right ahead. This live oak is uh, kind of an old friend of mine. I used to climb this tree. It's uh, well over 100 years old. And uh, in less than a week, it's gonna be taken down. It's in the path of the pipeline. Why on earth would anyone want to run a pipeline over someone's water source? It's just insanity. We need an environmental impact statement from Kinder Morgan. Personally, I'm a nana nah person, not here, not anywhere. And I would like to see us moving much more quickly to clean energy. The prophecy of the black snake goes back seven generations, where it was foreseen that we as humans would go through significant change from then to now. And at this point, the seventh generation would be faced with the choice. We would have two paths. One path would go down the route we are going down right now, which is a burnt earth, where we've used and extracted and abused our mother to the point where she no longer wants to support us. Our other path option is a greener route. It's a much harder route because it requires us to disconnect from a lot of the immediately satisfying things that we have come to expect in our society. We are the seventh generation. We understand why we are here. The metaphors for us, the black snake represents these pipelines, not only carrying crude oil, but also fracked gas and just the whole industry together is so destructive. We can't let this kind of thing continue to happen to one of the places that we care most about.